Hi everyone, so uh, I sat down today and decided to do some perfume first impressions. I have been making a few orders of both samples and full size bottles and yesterday a big batch of samples arrived and I wrote down some first impressions and I got a chance to uh, try um, a couple of things that I want to talk about. And um, just as I sat down today to talk about uh, the samples and the and the decant that I got yesterday, the uh, postman brought um, this box to my door as well. So we'll, after I'm done talking about the first impressions, I'm gonna, going to unbox this order from um, FragranceNet. But let's start with what uh, I tried yesterday. And I did decide to um, write down some notes as well. So I'll be referencing those because I wanted to uh, really keep my thoughts together. And I actually wrote down uh, both notes that are published online and also my first impressions as well. So I recorded my first impressions. So let's start with um, the Fragrance House Ikirio. And uh, I've heard about Ikirio many years back, probably around 2015, when I, um, I think Red Alessence was the first channel that I, um, where I heard about Ikirio. And Ikirio is a uh, indie uh, fragrance house that is based out of um, San Francisco, I believe, and it is created by Vincent from Dream House. So I uh, went on the website after watching further videos where these fragrances are spoken very highly about and I was very intrigued. And so I went on the Ikirio website and um, noted that they actually don't give out samples. And since the fragrances are quite, quite a bit on the pricey side, I... Uh, looked around on Google and I found that perfumology.com does provide samples and you can also purchase full-size bottles. They they do carry the Ikirio, um fragrances, some, some in the line. So um, from looking around on the website, on the Ikirio website, I really thought that there was a couple of fragrances that sounded very much to my taste based on the notes. And the first one that instantly caught my eye was Crestfallen. And Crestfallen is a fragrance that has notes of masala chai and carnation, both of which sound fantastic to me. Masala chai, I think, is familiar to all of us. And carnation is a note that is, I think it's used a lot in uh, vintage perfumery and I think a lot of niche houses also um, use carnation and it gives a nice deep spiciness to fragrances at least to my nose so yesterday I sprayed this sample you can see it's more than halfway done and I just got this yesterday so there's there's your first clue into as to what I think about this Oh my goodness, wow. So yesterday when I sprayed this, my first impression, and I literally noted down in my notebook, my first impression being, wow, realistic chai, spicy and warm. Very, very spicy, warm, just like you're drinking a delicious masala chai um, latte, very very delicious, um, very strong. I tried it yesterday, I loved it, and then it was my scent for the night, and my husband really liked it as well, and I put it on after my shower, around like maybe 8 p.m., and when I woke up in the morning, it was still very strong, and even my husband said, wow, you still smell really good, I can still smell that perfume. So this one is... Um, Definitely a candidate for a full bottle at some point. So that's Crestfallen by Ikiria. Next one that I ordered was Beige Flor 
I heard a lot of good things about Beja Floor, and Beja Floor, um, I think in uh, Portuguese means um, hummingbird, and that was uh, the inspiration for this, I believe. And this is a uh, more feminine oriented um, fragrance. And I ordered a sample of Beja Floor, and this one has notes of honeysuckle, jasmine, milk, and coconut. And my first impression yesterday after spraying it was that this is a very realistic, natural smelling honeysuckle, a very creamy smelling honeysuckle. Um, very beautiful, very, very uh, feminine, perfect for a spring, summer. A uh, honeysuckle is a popular note, but I have to say that this is the first time that I've smelled honeysuckle where it does not smell artificial or, um, or screechy or fake, where it's clearly like just a chemically imitation of honeysuckle. This honeysuckle is so naturalistic and smooth and warm, I think because it's paired with the other notes, the milk, the coconut, the jasmine, which I can't smell, but I feel like they reinforce the honeysuckle and make it seem very natural to me. This is just how, how I'm thinking about it. I have not given this a wear test on my skin, which I, I definitely will do. This is absolutely beautiful and I loved it as well. So I ordered two sam samples, just these two from perfumology.com, but they sent me two more samples, which was a, such a pleasant surprise. I was very, very um, pleasantly surprised. They sent me another sample from Ikirio, and this one is dreamwalking. Now, the word that's written here is just dreamwalking uh, with the letter scrambled, at first, I was thinking that this is in another language. I was thinking, oh, maybe this is like a Scandinavian um, type language, but no, it's just dreamwalking and it's scrambled. Now, what notes are being, um, what notes do we have in this? So on the website, it says that this has roses, lemon, lily of the valley, nightshade, patchouli, tree moss, chrysanthemum, and white musk, white tea, and coriander. And yesterday I wrote my first impression of this as soapy, clean, roses, green, and then after I dry down a little bit, sweet and spicy. So that was a first impression. And this one was my least favorite from the Ikirios that I got. And this morning I decided to give it another spray um, on my skin and just, I wore it all morning long. And it was slightly different on my skin. It was, it's a very green fragrance. It's a green roses type of fragrance where I smell both the rose and the rose leaves and the stems and other green, green notes and then I really do smell the lemon as well and lemon for me is a note that I struggle with a lot I tend to not like it in fragrances um, one fragrance that is very popular that I I've always struggled with and I really don't like is um, Daisy uh, the original Daisy by Marc Jacobs and that one to me smells very lemony and it reminds me of like bathroom cleaners. And this one is not quite as um, unpleasant as Daisy is to me. The lemon does warm up on the skin and it is very natural smelling. It's not a synthetic smelling fragrance. So after the dry down, it's very pleasant. I can see this being a signature scent, an everyday scent for a woman, especially spring summer scent. Given the notes in this, I did not expect it to be as long lasting as this is. This was a strong projector for at least four hours and I only had one, sp one spray on the back of my hand. I put my two hands together and it was very strong. All of the Ikirios seem to be very strong and very high quality. 
So this one, even though it was my least favorite out of all of them, I can see myself really growing to love this one as well. So I'm so happy. I'm so happy I tried three of the Ikirio fragrances. I know one thing that unifies all of them is that they are very strong. They smell like good quality, not fake, not synthetic, not watered down. It is what niche and 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 what niche perfumery what I expect from niche perfumery, let's put it that way. I don't expect it to be uh, mainstream pleasing. I don't expect it to be uh, fragrances where a big uh, corporate, um, large multinational company is dictating to the perfumer, you should have these notes so we can get this segment, so we can get millions and millions of buyers so we can make the most profit. This is the kind of fragrance where the um, artistry of the perfumer comes through and it does not seem to be inhibited by, um, you know, just a large corporation or is not inhibited by wanting to be uh, mass marketed and mass pleasing. And that is exactly what, that's exactly what I want right now. That's exactly what I am looking for right now. Uh, is uniqueness and artistry and not being afraid to um, stray away from, um, you know, just kind of being boring and plain and uh, pleasing to everyone. That being said, uh, I just love these. And I really think that a lot of people would love these um, if they appreciate, uh, if, if they are at least somewhat knowledgeable about perfumes not to say that I am but I am trying to learn and then last a sample that uh, perfumology sent me is actually a uh, perfume I've never heard about but uh, it's seems to be their in-house um, creation it's called Sudute and this I mean this is fantastic oh my goodness this smells so good this has a lot of notes um, I would describe it as a very fresh tea perfume but let me see what is um, what I wrote down yesterday. So Sudute, Sudute. Oh, I think it's on my first page here. Yes, yeah, Sudute. So this has green mango, lychee, mandarin, cinnamon, nutmeg, and clove, and then um, white tea, jasmine, frangipani, orchid, coriander. Aquatic no notes, benzoin, coconut wood, and sandalwood. And my first impression yesterday that I wrote down was, wow, tea notes immediately, spicy, woody, and I love it. This is like such a calming, meditative scent. I'm actually going to spray it on myself. Oh my goodness. It's uh, the woods, the, the very creamy sandalwood in the base comes through for me. Oh my God, it's so good. Definitely unisex. I can see this on a man. I can see this on a woman. It's fresh and like deep and spicy at the same time. It's fantastic. Oh my God. It smells very expensive as well. I think that's on account of that creamy sandalwood. Anytime I smell that creamy sandalwood, it just gives me like very expensive vibes. Mm. Yeah, this is a candidate for a full bottle as well, for sure. Fantastic. So I'm very pleased with perfumology. I've never ordered from them before, and I'm very, very happy with... Um, with what I received. So a lot of candidates for full bottles here. And these are not cheap. They're not horribly expensive though. They're not like, um, you know, Fra Fragrance du Bois or uh, uh, Parfum de Marly uh, prices, which those houses frankly don't interest me very much despite the hype that they're getting. Okay, next up, I made an order from a uh, Mercari seller for a decant of Zerzhov's 40 knots. I uh, attached a label myself. This came, um, this decant bottle, it's a 10 ml um, decant bottle. 
um, came without a label, but I put one of my labels and I, I wrote Zerja 40 knots and then of course it immediately rubbed off because I wore this yesterday. That was uh, my scent for the day yesterday. I've been very intrigued about this scent and uh, it's part of their Join the Club collection and 40 knots is uh, the Yacht Club. They don't publish the notes for these fragrances, but according to Fragrantica, uh, this is supposed to have a woody notes and sea notes and what else? Let's see, I wrote it down yesterday. Seawater and green notes. And my first impression of this yesterday was um, fresh and warm, very soothing, smooth, and reminds me of something from childhood beautiful fragrance it's uh, it, again let me spray this on my other hand it's similar to Sudote in that it has woody and aquatic notes blended to such smooth perfection that it there's nothing really sharp there's nothing really that punches you upon first spray. Like with, with some fragrances, you kind of have to let them settle down. Not with this one. Again, the smooth woodiness comes through. As I wore, wore it yesterday, I was thinking that there's a sweetness possibly from tobacco leaf coming through here. I got a, a little bit of that, but I could be wrong. That was just my impression. My husband uh, said... When I asked him what he thinks of it, I just kind of had him smell my hand. I didn't tell him anything about this. He said it smells really good, but he thinks that it's more masculine. And I would have to agree with him. I think it's maybe that tobacco and, and woodiness. Again, tobacco is just really what I smell in here. There's a hint of sweet tobacco, but I think it's unisex for sure. And uh, that's also a candidate for a full bottle and might be a candidate... Uh, for me, even though it is, uh, it is, it does give me masculine vibes, but it's beautiful, and it does remind me of like um, an old wooden chest or something like that, or an old drawer at my uh, grandparents' house. A long time ago in childhood, I used to rummage through an old wooden drawer uh, by my grandma's vanity. And she kept like some costume jewelry, some makeup, um, and she had a bottle of vintage perfume. And the whole drawer smelled of that perfume mixed with the wood. And that's kind of similar to how that smelled. I get a, the same type of vibe, um, except more concentrated in Chergy by Serge Luton's. So that's it for Azerja 40 Knots. And then uh, I placed another order also from a Mercari seller. Uh, and it's La Vie et Belle Iris Absolute. I was very intrigued by this fragrance. Uh, the, um, <laughs> the advertisement got me. And I'm, I love Iris in uh, fragrances. So I was very intrigued. I never really had the original La Vie Belle. I think I smelled it around the time when it first came out and it wasn't really for me. I think it might be too sweet for me. Never had any of the flankers, but this one really intrigued me. So I was, I was very excited to get it. The price was quite high, but I think it's starting to come down already. I, I don't think this is gonna be very popular. I could be wrong, but um, I'd have to say this is probably like my biggest disappointment yesterday from all of the um, ones that I ordered. So what did I write down yesterday? So the notes are iris, floral notes, jasmine, patchouli, amber, and fig. And the first impression that I got was that this smells like Upon first spray, and, and this is what I smell, so please just take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. I smell the same dried fruit notes, 
that I smell when I spray the original Lancome Trezor. I have the original Lancome Trezor purchased recently, N not a vintage bottle, a new, probably newer formulation. And when I sprayed the Lancome Trezor, I get the same exact dried fruit notes that I get in here. That's only upon first spray. And those, those dissipate a little bit after. And then after that, I'm just left with a kind of like um, a mix. And I can't easily identify iris. If, I, if this didn't say iris on here, I, I wouldn't even think to look for iris in the notes. I, I'm having trouble isolating the iris with my nose. That probably has to do with the fact that I'm, you know, I'm not that uh, discerning. That that probably would be a fair explanation for that. I I also wrote down yesterday. I'm not impressed. And needs further testing. <laughs> and I also wrote down, it's not sweet. I I did expect expect it to be more sweet. Uh, I wore it a little bit more yesterday. I did give myself a spray, and I wore it on my elbow. And I have to say it's very strong, which is good. I like strong fragrances. So that one spray under uh, on my elbow with a long sleeve projected through the sleeve and uh, through the fabric of the sleeve. And it was very, very strong. And I could identify the patchouli and I identified a familiar, familiar smell. And I think that's probably the DNA of La Vie Belle possibly, or the DNA of Lancome. I'm not really sure. But it was a little bit hard for me to identify the iris. There's a little bit of powderiness here. And maybe that is the, the iris that I'm smelling. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, makeup-y powderiness, which is very pleasant. But this, I need to really give it more of a test. Many times, many times it has happened to me where um, I first try a fragrance and I don't care for it, and then it starts to really grow on me to the point where I have to have it. So this could happen with this one as well. It's interesting enough where I want to further test it, wear it, try it, um, different weather conditions, different moods even. Uh, it's not boring because some of them, some some mainstream, and I consider this a more mainstream fragrance, some mainstream fragrances, you, you spray them and they're just, been there, done that. I've smelled this a thousand times everywhere I go. And uh, this is interesting, but I didn't like it as much as I expected to like it on first, uh, on first impression. So... There's that one. And let's set it to the side. And I ordered this from a Mercari seller again. And they did provide a nice sample of Gucci Guilty. The new formulation. I think this is the um, 2019 formulation of it. And it's supposed to have mandarin, geranium, and patchouli. I used to have the original Gucci Guilty back in the day when it was uh, a square looking bottle, a gold bottle, kind of mirror uh, looking bottle. Does anyone remember that? That one was discontinued. And this one the, is a little bit reminiscent of that, maybe not as strong, but it's very pleasant. It's, it's just one of those nice floral patchouli um, fragrances that um, is, is safe any time, day or night. And uh, yeah, anyway, so that was a nice bonus from the seller. So there we have it. This is, these are the fragrances that came yesterday, that I tested yesterday, that I thought about yesterday. Really had fun with it. And now, why don't we go ahead and open this nice box from uh, Fragrance Net. So I'm going to try and do that a little bit, maybe off camera. All right, before I do this, and I'm afraid I'm going to um, tear everything down, let me have a little bit more coffee. Excuse me.
Okay, and I think what I'm going to do is push some of this stuff gently. Let's see how smooth I am today. Okay, all right. Okay, that worked out. So here is my um, fragrance net box. It always comes packaged really nicely, very professionally. I'm going to um, tear it open. that to happen so this is not going to be as pretty of a display as I wanted it to be let's get this over with these boxes are very well packaged the thanks for your order the uh, more of the order information and huh, okay just one item I did order two perfumes but they only sent me one they only sent me one with this order oh this is not fragrance net this is fragrance X oh dear lord and I, I and it's even um, on the card here, so I'm still waiting for my fragrance net. The fragrance net has two fragrances in it, and the fragrance X was just one. But I made this order like after I made the fragrance net order, so I expected the fragrance net to be first. But usually lately they've been very slow. So fragrance X, this is fragrance X, guys, and I ordered a Mouage Bracken. This is my first amouage. Um, let me show you the box. Beautiful big box. I'm so excited. <laughs> this is a blind buy. I've never even tested an amouage. This is totally just me being completely... Um, I just went crazy and I just had to have an amouage. I've heard so much over the years. I was in love with the bottles. So for me, I know that they're challenging, but I like challenging fragrances. Oh, beautiful presentation. Very weighty box. And it opens like this. Wow, this part is very weighty, like very thick. Very thick cardboard. Do you see the walls? It actually has quite a bit of weight to it. And here is the fragrance and it's beautiful packaging. Let me take it out. There it is. Wow. It's so pretty. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. I just love these bottles. Hundred ml of Bracken, and I heard that this one is quite a um, quite a challenging one. But it was also one of the uh, less expensive ones, so that's pretty much why I pulled the trigger on this. And oh God, this bottle is just so pleasant. The cap is gorgeous. Look at this beautiful, beautiful cap. So let's give it, let's give it a spray on my arm here. Give it two sprays. Magnetic cap, beautiful magnetic cap. Oh, wow. Floral. Sp 
spicy floral like um and green it's a spicy floral and green maybe with a little bit of um honeysuckle like a little bit almost but not quite yeah very green floral fresh it's really nice and spicy I can really see this one um, opening up beautifully and, and, and drying down beautifully and it's fresh and but not soapy it's a floral and green it's floral and green for sure leaves and flowers like like faint least honeysuckle like flowers and uh, maybe neroli maybe neroli as well fire trucks are going by so excuse the noise but oh my goodness now it's honey-like and sweet. Oh my God, this is fantastic. You know, this had such mixed reviews. You know, people saying that it's, it's, it's all over the place and it's too much going on. No, this is a journey. Oh my God. Yeah, this is like, this is like a signature scent. By the, I don't mean that it's like, um, you know, safe in middle of the road. No, I just mean it's so interesting, but it's got this freshness and, and it's, it's not trying to be weird. It's not trying to be challenging in the way that Secretions Magnifique is trying to be challenging to kind of weed out the, uh, weed out the, the casual perfume wearer. You really have to, you know, you really have to work for some of these fragrances in the niche world, but not this one. I think this one is awesome. But anyway, um, this video is getting a little bit long, so I'm I'm going to stop here. I've got more fragrances coming, and hopefully I'll uh, do another video for you guys. And hopefully um, you guys enjoyed my first impressions. Again, these are first impressions of everything. And thank you so much for watching and please have a great day and enjoy wearing perfume because it's just one of the most amazing pleasures of life.